Let's do it. Welcome to the Robo Show, broadcasting from the University of Central Florida here in Orlando for the first robotics competition. My name is Dan Swando. And I'm James Austin. Today we're going to be bringing you into the action here at UCF Arena. We're going to be bringing you some interviews, in-depth analysis, and basically all the fun stuff that happens here at the Orlando Regional. Uh, for those who don't know, FIRST Robotics is a high school robotics competition that's designed to inspire students by giving them an interesting game challenge that they're then uh, forced to design a robot to play. Uh, they work with co professional mentors in the engineering field, also with college students, to get as much inspiration as possible. This particular regional has been going on for 15 years, and it's been a long and illustrious history. We have now a package that has some pictures and videos from all of these, along with an interview by our own Jonel Greger of Nina Webb, a 15-year volunteer. Florida Regional, so there were four of them over at Kennedy Space Center, and then we moved over here because we outgrew Kennedy Space Center, and so it, it's just been so much fun. Well, I started out as a judge, but as I got older, <laughs> and you, judging is a very difficult thing because you have to stand, follow the teams, try and find the teams, and write on a clipboard all the time. So when that got too difficult for me, I became just a um, volunteer and I've been an ambassador. Um, most of the time I've been an ambassador, yeah. Um, so these, the very first years, what was, what was different about it now? Like you can see how, much, how big it is and how much it's grown. It has gotten a lot bigger, and it's grown, but it's still so exciting. And what keeps bringing me back is the first teams are the cream of the crop. I mean, when you go into a school and teach, you're exposed to all types of kids. Mm -hmm. But when you come to first, you've got the cream of the crop. Yeah. What is your favorite part about coming to this competition? I know you said because of the students are the cream of the crop, but is there anything else you look yes, forward to? Yes, yes. Every year I get to see friends that I haven't seen for a whole year. Mm -hmm. And this is our thing we do together. Mm -hmm. And we have a lot of fun. That's, you know, it's as much fun for the volunteers as it is for the kids. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. <laughs> you know. Yes, I know. <laughs> <laughs> but, I know for years they tried to get us as judges to dance because when the, f the floor would go off or whatever, it wouldn't work, they wanted the judges to come forward and dance. And no, we don't dance. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I don't really cheer, <laughs> except boom. <laughs> Do you know how many teams that the Florida Regional started out with? No, I don't. You don't? I know we have 63 here. 63 were registered here, but they didn't all come because Two teams got snowbound in Massachusetts and their planes wouldn't bring them down, but their robots came. <laughs> it's hard being in the new kids on the block, and nobody knows that better than the rookie teams in their first year at the first robotics competition. We have eight rookies competing at the Orlando Regional this year, and we went around uh, to all their pits to see what their first impressions of the regional were. It's ridiculous. As soon as I walk in, I look, I'm like, oh God, oh God, like, we're here. We gotta make noise. I was expecting a lot of chaos. Um, I didn't think that there would be that many um, well-established teams as well as all the intricate displays and fanfare. Um, that's really exciting. We're expecting to, like, to learn a lot from this experience. Um, since we are a rookie team, we're expecting to like see other teams and gain knowledge from them. So we can, like, improve, like, we're hoping to win this year, but even if we don't, we hope that we can learn from this experience and achieve more next year. We, we knew coming into this one it was going to be a big deal. There's a lot of big teams down here in Florida, um, you know, Pink and Spam and all these huge teams that we've heard about, you know, and it's kind of like a dream. We come in here, our mentors have been everywhere else, and they're like, you know, you're going to see these teams, Pink, Spam, all these other crazy name teams, Exploding Bacon. And we get here and it's like, whoa, you, those, these are the teams you're talking about, but we're competing on the same level. And it's just, it's, it's such a weird experience. On the opposite side of the aisle, we had veterans with decades of experience coming from all across the world, including Brazil and Wiesbaden, Germany. Here's some of the introspections that we got from them. 
We've been in the Florida Regionals for about seven years. This is our ninth year being in the regional. As a team, we've been here for seven years. We've been here since 2007. Um, I came my freshman year, this is my senior year. We've gone to the Palmetto Regional the past two years. We're back, glad to be back. Um, miss it, it's a different experience and we, we love it. It's exciting, the atmosphere is just... The people are crazy. <laughs> my favorite part would probably be the dancing. Orlando is a big regional, so it's a big city, like a, uh, one of the most international cities in the United States. So we come here because the venue, and we know this is a big party at first. So. Um, I'm not a big sports fan, but I would have to say the excitement of the crowd is equal to a sports yeah. arena. Like the yeah. friendliness and the, like everyone's like in it, you know. Yeah. I, I find that that's, that's mirrored in just a grander scale here, you know. You, you walk around and, I mean, you, you lend things to other teams, you borrow things from other teams. Like, I if you need something, there are 54 other teams or however many other teams there to help you out with anything. And you know that you end up doing something nice for another team as well. This year, we came here with a non-functioning, non-legal robot and we're making it work right now. So, once I see this thing out in the, in the arena competing, that's going to be an amazing experience. The first robotics competition is actually just only one facet of many first many competitions. There's also first tech challenge, first Lego league, and junior first Lego league. We have a state run FTC league here and we actually had the state championships just this past weekend. We sent our cameras there to get all the action for you. Florida FTC held its state championship last weekend, which culminated the end of the season, which started back in September when teams were shown the brand new game for the 2012-2013 game. The game is played on a 12-foot square padded field, and the main game piece are rings. The game features a 30-second autonomous period where teams attempt to hang a special ring on the infrared beacon column for big bonus points. After that is a two-minute driver control period where scoring rings on various levels of the pegs gave them various levels of points. Additionally, if teams were really lucky, they were able to make lines. These lines were sort of a big tic-tac-toe game, which gave you even more bonus. Additionally, you get a 20% bonus for hanging special weighted rings, and the big end game, well, that was lifting robots. 30 points for one inch and five points for every inch after that. Florida was a pilot program for FTC having a league system. There were six leagues across the state that played smaller matches that featured judging sessions and just qualifying matches. The top 24 teams were then all ranked against each other and met up for the big state championship at Embry Riddle University's ICI Center. The university was out in full force showing their stuff, and the teams were really excited to come and met, finally meet up across the league. This event truly did have the top robots in the state, possibly even in the nation, as where last year's FTC world champion came from. from there There was even a halftime show where giant soccer balls and fans and a pseudo blue man group show came out and showed what FTC is really, oh really fun. Quick work. Quick work Eventually, after all the rings were scored and all the things, all the tallies were totaled, the winning alliance of team 38-46, and 38-39 came out on top. Also, we have to congratulate team 5070 Nuts, who won the Inspire Award, the highest award bestowed on an FTC team. So good luck to teams 38-46 and 57 representing Florida FTC at the World Championship. FTC is also a, also a high school based competition and a lot of students really enjoy it. Actually team 50, 5070 that you saw there at the end, the Inspire Award winners, has a team here at the regional. Now, now Thursday uh, is uh, traditionally a day for practicing with your robot, figuring out all the bugs, and occasionally te tearing down your entire robot and rebuilding it. Uh, we have some highlights of today's action on the practice field.
two, one, go. Yeah, Thursday's always a weird day on the field. It, it's a lot of just working out kinks and making sure the robot works because the teams actually had bagged the robot and they hadn't touched the robot until this actual competition. It was the first time they saw it in about a couple weeks. Yeah, it's an interesting new format, this bag and tag. Usually, uh, I'm, I'm used to all these crates everywhere yeah. and we don't even have any crates. We have a whole bunch of uh, bags out there. Yeah. But the, uh, I think the most interesting thing is how different all these teams are uh, playing the game. Mm -hmm. I mean, you've got these discs that are a completely different geometry than these teams are used to. Yeah, definitely. We're used to poof balls or uh, perhaps inner tubes. Occasionally we'll do a square thing, uh, but we've never really dealt with a Frisbee-style disc. It's something different for most of us. And I was actually impressed with the amount of teams that actually figured out how to pick up and index them pretty well so far. Yeah, they're not, not only picking... Uh, them up from the human player station, but they're picking up off the ground, which I'm surprised. I didn't think that that was going to happen. Based on my evidence with dogs trying to pick them up off the ground, I thought it was kind of kind of difficult to figure it out. <laughs> uh, there's also the addition of the pyramid this year, which is a really uh, it, it draws your attention definitely in the field. I mean, the whole point of getting to the top of that 30 point pyramid is is I thought very difficult, and a couple teams pulled it off pretty well just today. Yeah, the point the points are pretty uh, enticing, and uh, you know it's. It's uh, interesting how many different ways of doing it teams are, are uh, taking because uh, keep in mind, you actually have to have uh, multiple steps in completing the finale objective this year, which hasn't been done in the first competition. Yeah, you have to make sure you touch each level actually uh, 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 as you go, so it's sequentially up the pyramid. Also, you can't reach Ab above more than one pyramid, so you have to be off the floor before you can reach for the second bar. It's actually a really difficult task this year. Especially at that kind of a steep angle. A mm -hmm. couple teams that actually had a bit of a different Thursday experience than most. Um, 1592 and 801, their trailer on the way into Loden late last night, right before uh, the pits actually closed for Loden, the trailer got rear-ended. Um, it was pretty severe damage to the trailer. Luckily, no one was hurt involved in the trash and the, the crash and the frame damage to the robot was pretty intense. When we heard this, we were in panic mode and we started immediately getting ready to um, do replacements. We had all the stock in our lab and we started getting all the pieces ready for the shop here. Mm -hmm. uh, we called immediately to the regional directors to see what they would do. And right now they're not gonna say yes or no to anything until yeah. the first headquarters which we'll find out soon, hopefully. All right, cool. So do you have a repair plan for uh, how the robots to get fixed? Or? Um, well, last night we spent most of the night just trying to get the stocks and some lightning holes, yeah. or mounting holes at least, for the drive chassis, because those are the things that destroyed the most. Because mm -hmm. uh, that's the important part, at least, just driving around for us. All right, cool. Um, I know you guys are twins. Are there any plans on, do you have a whole lot of spares because of that, or is it? We can't make a whole lot of spares. I mean, we have a full practice robot, mm -hmm. which is now in the back right now, which you can see. And that's kind of what we're hoping to rely on, which the first headquarters lets us. That'll be a competition robot. All right. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, actually, right before we began filming this tonight, uh, Team 801 was on the field testing their comms and successfully completed a uh, communication with the field. We're very pr happy to see them testing that, and we, uh, we wish them the best of luck, both teams, 801 and 1592. Uh, and we look forward to seeing them on the field on Friday. Well, thank you for joining us uh, here on the uh, inaugural broadcast of the Robo Show. <laughs> we'll be back again tomorrow at 7 p.m. with uh, more action, interviews with our special guests, uh, Friday highlights, analysis, and an in-depth look at some of our amazing teams here at the Orlando Regional. Be sure to find all the, uh, go to theroboshow.net, that's theroboshow.net. You can find all our videos, information about us, information about US First itself. Also, follow us on Twitter, at RoboShowLive, and tweet with the hashtag RoboShow and hashtag OMGRobots. Yeah, for uh, 
Robo Show. I am Dan Swando. And I'm James Austin. And uh, we'll, we'll see Have you Have a good night. See you tomorrow.